We are live, Jesse Aller. We are live on Friday afternoon. It's exciting. We are facing off here. That's now right. Look at me. Look at me. I have I have nothing in my way. I have I have I, I can move my arms all around, my casting arm. The, uh, I'm I'm right handed, but it's reversed here. And no, I'm uh, gonna close my door, but I'm just gonna point something out here, you know. But look uh, at this, look at this. I'm I'm totally I'm I can do anything I want and nothing's in the way. Tom, except Tom, the, except look, the catchers on I got my... no problem here. See, I'm just I, I'm rowing a boat, I'm casting a fly rod. And you're banging, you're, no, you're banging no against, you're banging against that thing. I forgot my dumbbells are downstairs, and I'm not going to run down and get them. All right, everybody, quick, five, you know, uh, one minute plank. And my dumbbells are bigger than yours. Yeah, I guarantee they are. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Because guys, because guys that wear sling bags use bigger dumbbells. Well, uh, sure. My my shoulders and legs are stronger because I can carry more weight evenly distributed across my body. <laughs> your shoulders are your shoulders are stronger because you row one of those stupid boats. Oh yeah. Anyway, shall we talk about shall we talk about um and and in, in all seriousness, folks, um you're both dumb belks. Is that a Wisconsin term? B E L K. You're both dumb belks. I don't know what belks means. Do you? Uh, I'm I'm gonna say that that's that's probably a really awesome compliment. So yeah, I, I think it is. Well, thank you, Bruce, for your compliment. Um, so, Roger, um, I'm hearing a little echo of my voice. So. Um, can you turn those headphones down a little bit? Put you out there. Um, Roger and Irma are here, and Skip is here from Maine, and Larry from Texas. Oh, bells. <laughs> You're both dumb bells. <laughs> <laughs> I like belks better. Okay, so in all seriousness, folks, um, whatever you decide to carry your stuff in, is a personal decision okay nobody's going to tell you what's right or wrong and you know when people ask me all the time what i carry my stuff in what's your opinion well my opinion should really shouldn't matter that much to to you because um it's just my opinion and it's the way i like to carry stuff it's you know like uh what kind of luggage do you like or what kind of backpack do you like or whatever i don't know Jesse, you got a better analogy? Well, the beauty, I mean, as not only the product developer for Vess, but for most fishing carrying items and luggage, I love them all. But I do have preferences at certain times for different things. And it is, it's, it's a matter of preference. And there's no wrong answer, but there's a lot of right answers. And it really does depend on what you want to do, you know? Um, and your your strategy for the day or for general use. So let's look, why don't we why don't you and I talk about why we prefer what we prefer um, and how we came about this decision and then and then we'll we'll talk about the pros and cons. How's that? Sounds awesome. Yeah. All right. So I'll go first. Um, the reason I carry a sling bag is because most of my fishing buddies are a lot younger than I am, like Jesse. <laughs> Um, you know, some of them are, are 20 or 30 years younger than me. And I used to wear a vest and I suddenly became the old guy who had a vest on. Everybody else had sling bags and, and chest packs and all that stuff. So I thought, well, you know, I better, I better keep up with these guys. So I got a sling bag as simple as that. But once I got the sling bag, I fell in love with it. Um, and for a number of reasons. Um, one is that I love, I love it, you know, all teasing aside, being out of the way. Um, when I have the sling bag on, I have my, this is reverse, so it's very difficult. I have my forceps. <laughs> yeah, this is hard to, I have my forceps here. And then the other thing that I always need 
is my dry shake or whatever you call this stuff. Uh, we call it shaking flute because when I'm fishing, uh, particularly in small streams, when I'm dry fly fishing, uh, I use this stuff a lot. And um, so that's handy. And that's what I use most often, even more than, than tippet material or flies. Um, and and those, are, those are right there in front of me. And then when I need to when I need to get my stuff, I just sling this around, center myself here, and I've got like my little desk here with all my stuff in it, whatever I need, my tippets right there. Um, you know, anything I need is going to be here. And I, what I try to do is I try to put all my fly boxes in this front thing or most of them, except for the biggest ones, because I often carry a full size DSLR camera. And I got tons of room in here for a camera, for my lunch, for my raincoat, whatever. Uh, so, and then when I'm done, I just do this. And it's behind me. Um, it's comfortable. Uh, you know, it doesn't get in, doesn't get in the way. And um, that's, that's why I like a chest pack. All right. <laughs> That's why so I'm going to give uh, Yusuf a, a shout out there because he, he's been asking. We, we see we uh, we see your comments and we'll get to your question in a little bit. But uh, you asked a few times. Just want to make make you know that it looks like you're coming through YouTube. So we uh, we see you and we see your comments. We hope to get to them. Um, so Tom, great point. And I think uh, you know the the sling has many many attributes that are great. Um, in particular, the guide sling and the 18 liters capacity that has. Um, the specific efficiencies and storage that were kind of brought into that pack. So, uh, you know, when we were developing um, all of our stuff, but specifically that pack series, just to, to hit that for a moment, we started to think about it, you know, once a rig, once a fish, once in a while and once a day and how that workflow kind of came through. But actually that mentality was sort of inspired by um, vests for me. And because one thing I do think vests do, not only can they carry a lot of capacity in general, but they have an immense amount of organization, right? And so once you build the roadmap that is your vest, and as you, you know, the the most kind of uber you you know anglers or users really have very set compartments. Uh, here I'm wearing the the pro vest, and it has 18 pockets. It's almost a little too much, but should you be a person that likes to really know where everything is at all times and access them readily? It's a, it's a great solution for that. If you if you if you don't need as much storage but love the way that the vest organized, then an ultralight or something like that is a good option, or our new clear water vest as well. So, what I love so much about this vest, and I'm gonna just pop this down just a little bit there, so you can get a little idea of kind of what I have going on here. Um, first of all, uh, you know I gotta have ready access to the things that I'm gonna touch the most. This uh, my forceps right here, but more specifically my nippers, um, where I'm right re readily going uh, to to. Uh, access my tippet material, which believe it or not, I just took off and it's normally connected right here. I should probably go grab that. It's sitting right over there. I can see it, but I'm not going to do it. I have two elastic loops and it's right here. And what I love, and sorry to do this because it is so important. Yeah, go get um, it, Jesse. What I love about this, um, having that clipped across my chest is just its ability and ready access to be able to easily grab as much material as I want when I want it. And it simply can come off and hang when you're not in use, but when you are, are out fishing, there you go. It's clipped right there across. So I can simply pull off the X amount that I want, tie my knot, and then know exactly how much I can take off and cut it. That's a really great feature because you're not cutting too short or cutting too long. Really enjoy that. So ready access to tools. I've got lots of storage here for all my fly boxes, and I know which fly box is here. If, I, if I'm going to fish very specific bugs, they're going to be in that in my left side where my right hand comes across and grabs really easy with my with my rod tucked underneath. I've got bigger pockets. Should I want to carry big big boxes like streamer boxes or extra extra boxes right there? Here's my big streamer box right there. Up here, it's all organization, right? Certain times of year, it actually changes. Right now, again, coming across with my right hand to my left, I've got it's it's that time of the year, so I've got my indicators. I've got, uh, you know, additional leaders, things like that. Um, down here, I've got my split shot. And on this side, I'm going to have my less access things like my leaders and things of that nature. Additionally, on the back, 
uh, it allows me to be able to carry some of those other larger capacity things. Uh, like, let's just take a look what we have back there. Um, Got to make sure you always have your net hanging in a manner that's really easy for me to take my hand back, actually my left hand, grab my handle and scoop a fish. But having this nice big compartment as well as a pass-through gives me tons of additional storage. So when I was a guide, it was great to have all that stuff organized. In the back, I might have things like a rain jacket, the client's rain jacket, in my case, a dog leash, a headlamp, snacks for when the fishing gets good and I don't want to leave. And most importantly, when you see your favorite author out on the river, just in case, he'll be there to sign because Tom always has time for his fans. So make sure you're always carrying that. That's what the vest always has room for, those little special things. First aid kits, <laughs> additional uh, lug, additional lunch, as well as water bottles, uh, things of that nature. So, so many things you can carry in a vest and keep them extremely organized. And that was just the exterior pockets. And so it's so easy to get to that. that stuff in the back. What's that? What, what, it's so easy to get to that stuff in the back in the middle of the stream. <laughs> Well, you can't put a rain jacket on when you're wearing your vest unless you want to wear it over your vest. So you have to take your vest off anyways. What if you need to read that book right away? What if you need to remember how to tie a knot? <laughs> well, I do happen to have the knot. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> um, uh, agreed. It's It does require to, to have that, but you have that large capacity. Same with the sling as well. There, it's definitely there. But I can get a lot more fly boxes as an organization readily available. And again, part of the design of these vests was to keep things relatively, you know, flush, smooth, so your fly line doesn't catch as much. Same with that sling pack as well. So um, it's that they're good solution. Just love the organization of the vest, you know, and and all those things. You know, again, you, the the keys to go home at the end of the day. The uh, the wipes, should you get a little chicken grease on your hands from the buffalo wings that you bought at the gas station before the hatch. Um, you know, so you always got to have like the extreme organization. And I want you to know that I have had this sling bag. This is the new sling bag. And this this is the ultralight. Is this the pro or the That's the pro. the pro. That's what I'm wearing the right pro now. Bag. Yeah, I have had both of these sitting on the floor here in my fly tying room, and and I I can't I haven't started fishing seriously. I I'm not sure which one I'm gonna wear. You know, I'm really torn. I'm really torn. So I, um, and you know, um, most of you most of you guys obviously can't don't have that luxury because you don't have a pipeline to the to Orvis products that don't cost you very much. Um, so we understand that it's, that it's, you know, it's an important decision. It's not an totally, it's not an inexpensive piece of gear. So you do want to do want to make the right choice. Yeah. But I'm thinking I, about I, it. I'm thinking well, about it, Jesse. There's, there's great. Um, there, it, again, it, it really does depend on what you're going to do as a guide. It was imperative for me to carry, you know, 17 different boxes from my betas, keeping them separate from my paralyps and, you know, and, <laughs> and then my general atoms or things like that. So I had very specific, kind of, you know, sort of things in my gigantic box of squirmies and mops, which is really all I ever use. Um, uh, but being able to uh, have those sort of things, carry the first aid kit, you know, um, I didn't ever really have to carry a sat phone in my career. Um, they were quite expensive back in the time when I was guiding. But uh, being able to, to have that stuff split out and be able to know where you get it. And then invariably, um, somebody's always going to ask, uh, you know, uh, hey, can you carry this jacket? Or uh, I don't have a place for my water. And, and uh, you know, if you're taking a walk on a walking way trip and not necessarily rowing a boat, it's always nice to have that extra spot. Now, you do, you can build them out a little bit much sometimes, though. Um, here's a good question from JJ. Uh, with most people being right-handed, why is the sling over the right-hand shoulder? Also, I put my rod under my left arm and change flies. Well, guess what, JJ? 
the new sling bag, um, and I'm having trouble getting used to it, goes over your left shoulder. This is my left shoulder. Um, and I am right-handed caster so that I don't have that strap. And I, and I asked Jesse, I asked, when I first got the sling bag, I said, hey, this doesn't feel right. What, what's going on? My net's in the wrong place and everything. And Jesse said, oh, we changed it this year uh, to put for right-handers, which most people are, um, to put it over your left shoulder. So it does go over your left shoulder. And I don't see, I don't see any way um, where you can't put your rod under either your right or your left because that sling bag should be in the center of your back when you're not fishing. So JJ, you can put your rod under, under either, under either arm if you want, it's not going to get in the way. Now, Jesse, I have a question for you because this is beyond my um, spatial relations skills. Can a left-hander, left-hander can still wear this pack, right? It's just that they're going to have the pack over, they're going to have the strap on their left shoulder, right? Absolutely. I mean, the right-handers wore the original two, three series of States Patches slings for almost, what, a decade and a half um, on their shoulder with very little issue. Um, but uh, specifically to JJ's comment, um, we did get a lot of like, would, it would be interesting. And so um, we do feel that, you know, the way we can design it and the way we build a suspension, it's, it's harder to get that same feel on an ambidextrous sling where it would be easily switchable. Um, so we decided that the, we wanted to give the left shoulder um, a shot on this round of bags. And we're, we're really excited to how it turned out. Um, here's one from Vigo. I love the sling, but I rather use a vest because when I use a sling, I got nowhere to hang my uh, fishing net. Um, there is a D ring on oops, shoulder I strap. Lost my, oh, there's yep. a D there ring on the shoulder strap, and I use a magnetic net holder, and that's where I keep my net, and it works out quite well, and it stays behind me and out of the way. So there, there is a place. There is a place for you go to, uh, to put Well, your... as well as, Tom, that guide sling has the net pass-through between the back panel and the, um, and the main body of the bag that allows you to slide the net between the back panel and the main uh, portion of the bag. Not only that, when you swing the bag around, uh, creates a solution in which the net bow does not get in there. So Tom's going to show you. I'm going to grab a sling over here and just give you a quick oh. little demo. That would be if I was carrying a bigger net, right? That I could put a bigger net in there. You, yes, you, so. and, you and you and Sean carry Decent point here, Tom. Jesse, Jesse, you and Sean carry big nets, but I don't need one. So right here, it's a net pass through, and you can see right here that there's a little port that it comes out of on the side. And so if you take a myriad of different net sizes, say your smaller hand net, that'll fit really nice and snug right in there as well as the ever popular mid-length handled net, which also fits in there. And there was some specific design done on this. So when you swing this bag around, that the net actually doesn't come up in your face here. It's, it's in this position. So you can still readily access your bag as needed, but have access to your net. Not to mention, it stays nice and secure in that back panel. Now with those smaller nets, it's a great place to be able to secure that net while you're hiking in or doing whatever. And then you can hang it from the D-ring or, you know, kind of popularized by some of the competitive angling is you can use this strap here on the side to, um, you know, also clip a, um, a care beater on with your net thing. So some people who get into a hole, they're going to be there for a little bit. They're actually clip their net readily at their hips. So it's even easier to access. When I wear a um, when I wear a net on my vest, if you notice where it is versus where the handle hangs, hangs a little to the side, and so when I'm grabbing, my handle's right there. It almost becomes sort of a natural position to where it is. And that's another thing that people don't think a lot about is having your handle hanging down. A lot of nets come with the hole and the string off the top, which is you know an easy place to attach. 
But now they're coming a lot more with Velcro on the top. And you want to hang your net bow side up if you're wearing a direct line on your back. Because when you reach back, you're grabbing the handle. You're not necessarily grabbing the bow and then having to negotiate, um, you know, a better place, um, uh, you know, to, to a second grab with the thing, especially when you're trying to land a fish. For both you and the health of the fish, it's nice to have a, a efficient transition. And I also think that's a wonderful thing solution about both products on um, the vest and the sling. Oh, great. And and I noticed there were a lot of uh, uh, net questions. So I'm glad that you, you covered all of those options. And then um, Ed wants to know what the gray slotted patch is on the shoulder. The, I'm sorry. Oh, the Hypalon. Um, thank you for asking. I'm sorry. I have, when you're a pack and vest developer, you have stuff on the floor everywhere. And I'm sure everybody would love to see what's on my floor right now. That's why my camera is top secret. Sort of angled upwards. Um, uh, so right here, um, I believe this is what he was talking about right here on the. Um, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. a that's a, um, a little a kind of sort of like a daisy chain, a hypalon material. Very, very uh, durable um, synthetic material that allows you to do many different things. One, you can clip tools directly into it. You can push, um, uh, take a clip um, zinger and slide it underneath and clip your zinger. And you can see there's a little elastic tab here that allows you to basically be able to have a zinger with a nipper here. And on the slings, you're also going to note right here, there's another little uh, port for you to put uh, a um, pair of nippers as well. So as we were talking about, Tom, when you're... When you're fishing and readily kind of um, readily kind of uh, you know need that certain amount of stuff right here in the front, it's great to be able to have your floating and your quick grab items, your forceps behind there, and a pair of nippers. So if you don't have to do any major things or grab any more tippet, you can really have it all here without having to spin your bag. It's kind of like your first workstation, and then if you need to go, you can obviously spin it around, access your uh, your tippet docking station here, and then the quick access spot for another set of nippers. And they can just be basic nippers, but it's nice to have those two locations. Should you want to carry two pairs of nippers, I, I you know I'll carry uh, my nice pair probably over here, and on the front I'll just have a little kind of fishbowl style comfy grip nipper just for the quick little clips um, that I need to make, but. Having, again, additional docking uh, on the front strap just gives you more places, low profile, less swing, to be able to keep some of the gear so you don't have to rotate your bag that around as often. I hope that answered your question, Ed. Yeah, I'm still seeing a lot of net questions. If, if we didn't answer your net questions, you can easily What was carry my net, net question? Uh, uh, I, I can't, I'm still seeing them. I'm not sure. Um, but we'll, you know, if we didn't answer them, um, please uh, uh, tell us specifically. Um, this is a question from Porpoise Power. One problem I have with my wrestling bag is the strap on my hat always seems to get looped around the handle of my hemostats when I'm trying to bring it around front. I would, I would move your hemostat somewhere else, <laughs> right? Because there's sure. there, the number, number of places you can put it. That, I think it's he's talking about an older one, and I, I would have that. that I mean, I, I would have that problem with the old one with my uh, sunglass lanyard where I, I'd get it caught. But now, um, with this in here, it's not going to not going to be as likely to get caught. And a lot of people have different ways of managing. Um, one first, the slack on the on the line, and two, um, you know, two, uh, you know whether or not they use this tension um, lock right here. Um, this tension lock is really designed to be really quick and easy. So simply just lifting that. So I see a lot of people, um, you know, actually do, you know, they, before they sling the bag, when they're fishing or they're walking a lot, they really like to get it up tight. So there's not a lot of swing. Um, but you know, some people relax it once they kind of get on their little stretch of water on their run or whatever. And then I've also noticed quite a bit that people, before they'll rotate their bag, they'll just pull a few inches, pull it back around. And the beauty of that tension lock is it's so easy to re-engage. Um, and as you can see, there's a there's a lot of tag in here. I mean, slings are obviously meant to fit a wide range of body types. And it's really not that overall complicated to find the right length, 
trim it down, burn the end, burn the nylon webbing with your end. And if you want to make it even, you know, so it doesn't easily come through, just do a few stitches to kind of get a little bit of a loop if you want to have a pull spot or just a fold. And, and that's, that's just one less thing. I actually really like to trim my stuff because I don't expect a lot of different body types, pretty much just me using it. So once I fit it, I can customize it. And then there's just less stuff going around. Certainly those elastic straps can be useful and I'll kind of do like a multi fold and then tuck them up underneath or I'll actually wrap multiple times, spin the, the elastic. So it kind of rolls it up and kind of holds it all together because it's rolled within the actual webbing. Just another way to kind of manage that slack. But you don't have webbing hanging off when you're wearing a vest. So you got that going for you. How do you carry the longer hand handle net with the vest? I don't. I mean, it's uh, it's a great question. And when I was a guide, I did carry a long handle net, but I just didn't attach it. When you're a guide, as many of you know, you don't fish. <laughs> you you support other people fishing. Um, and so my main thing was carrying a net. And I, I, I had a few different lengths depending on what kind of uh, area I was going to. If I was going to be on a big open stretch of the Colorado or, or something of that, you know, nature, I could take a boat net and it would make it really easy to land fish. Um, when, uh, when I was going into, you know, here on the East coast and I started guiding some of the smaller sort of spring creaky style, um, you know, fisheries that were harder to get around. I started carrying kind of like a, a more snub nosed, but wider, uh, wider basket net. And, and those fit really well on my vest, or I would just hand carry in, you know, my mid length. Um, I have some like hybrid versions of those that have been useful, but I, I don't, it's a, it's a great question. Um, you can carry them. Some people will talk them in the belt. There are ways to, you know, there are, are accessories that you can attach to your waiting belt to kind of drop it in. Uh, Smith Creek weight makes a really nice one. Um, that sort of just holds it in its, in its position on your belt. But I found that if it's too long of a handle and net, it'll hit the back of your waders a lot when, especially when you're trying to like jump a fence or hop over a tree, you know, a tree root or something like that. So. Jesse, do you have the other two size, the other size of. You bet I do. I, I don't, mean, I don't got, hear. <laughs> I've got an offsite Orvis pack sample room over here. basically. All right. Let's show people the other sizes. Uh, Jay wants the Jay's not sure he needs the, the bigger one. And if, you know, if you don't carry a camera like I do, a big camera, um, or, or you don't carry a ton of fly boxes, then you probably don't need this, the guide sling size. I mean, you can still hold a lot of fly boxes, Jay, in the, uh, in the right. standard size. Thank you for your patience. I didn't know I was going to have to tap into all that stuff, or I would have had it readily all right. for all of That's you. All right. you, never know what we're, you never know what questions we're going to get, right? This is a so tough crowd. That's that's what's fun about you know you never know what's gonna happen with Tom. It's 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 always an adventure. I can tell you from firsthand experience. Um, so starting at the the smallest size, we have our mini sling, and I'm pretty sure this is uh, it's uh, uh eight liters if I'm not mistaken. I think it's eight liters. It might be six. Um, I, I you'll have to forgive me. I'm a lot else going on in the in the product world for me right now. Uh, it, it although this just launched, I completed this project a, a few years we ago. Don't, we don't know um, what eight liters is, anyways. Yeah, right. We're not Canadian, so or it's this not all the, of us, anyway. Sorry about the sorry about that, Canadians. <laughs> this is the mini sling. It's available in both the brown and the fishy wear collaboration color right here. It just has a simple um, access front pocket and a main compartment. Has a few of the features like the fly patch. A little more simplified strap still has the Hypalon docking a little under the a fly patch hemo docking to avoid that adjustable sternum strap. Um, and that and kind of raised back panel to kind of give you a little bit of airflow. Um, when we step up to the standard, what we're calling the standard sling or the middle size or kind of the what was the traditional Orvis sling. The original. Um, you get here, which is a, um, this is an 11 liter bag. So you step up, I, I, I almost think it's uh, the, the previous bag was six, this is 11. Um, and uh, here is gonna be your first expression of what we call our Tippet Whippet Tippet Docking Station, which is a compression molded Tippet Docking Station that allows you easily dispense Tippet, very much like I was talking about earlier of having it clipped onto my elastic loops on my vest. Really quick access, it's all adjusted from the internal part 
um, you get some of the additional, you know, grab handle loop right there and a similar strap to what you saw on the mini sling. And then the grab booba here is the guide sling. Um, and that's what we were kind of, Tom is wearing right now. And here's an expression of it in the camo. The uh, standard sling is available in sand, camo, and fishy. Um, and then the guide sling is offered in sand and camo. Um, this is, again, has the uh, tippet docking station. It has the net pass-through that we exhibited um, earlier, which kind of sneaks in through right there and exits out the bottom panel. And here you're going to see the expression of not only having that stuff, but what we kind of call our, we jokingly call it the flotation station, a great place to keep things like your floatants and things like that with a little kind of forcep um, behind the pocket docking area that allows you to kind of keep your forceps out of the way and readily available behind the pocket. So, uh, you know, six... 11 and 18, I'm, I'm not sure on the six, but those are the three sizes. Um, it's the first time we've been able to offer all three of them. So it's, again, that's another perfect example. If you're a sling wearer, that six or, you know, the mini sling is probably great for that. Jump out of the car with the, you know, the sandals on and do a little rock hopping up your favorite Creek. And the slings for, you know, a pretty decent adventure. And the guide sling is, you know, it's got room for everything. You can fit your big streamer boxes in there, you know, rain jackets, um, you know, uh, how many, how many liters J wants 18 on the, on the guy sling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, you know what, you know what I think is brilliant, Jesse, and I didn't realize this till I got the new sling bag is this adjustable, this adjustable, this, this strap, this little, this little side strap is essential because when you bend down, if you don't have this, um, if you don't have this hooked in, your sling's going to turn around and fall in the water. <clears throat> um, I think our original sling didn't have that and it was a royal pain. But now when you when you bend down to land a fish or look at a bug on the water or something, your sling stays put. But um, not everybody's built the same or wears it the same. Mm -hmm. And I just I just think the ability to move this uh, around mm -hmm. is, is brilliant. Well, having really. a adjustable sternum strap, uh, it was on the, the slings in the, the previous safe passage, but having the adjustability is... Again, yeah. it's it's yeah. customizable because, as I said, you know, some people like to wear it up tight to them, and some people really do kind of open it up and and have a very relaxed fit, for a lack of a better words. And you can kind of adjust that. I just want to say, uh, either Timber or Darcy, that's why I was using leaders. I I know, so I just want to call out that's why I was using leaders. Um, I'm watching. The I already, I already apologized to him in print. <laughs> Do we have a bag built to support a hydration bladder? Um, so, you know, not specifically per se. The bug out backpack has a sleeve in it that allows you to slide one in with a place to dock uh, or hang a platypus or a camelback. Um, so it is made for that ability. The sling packs um, are not, do not have a specific sleeve in them, but there's so much room in any one of those bags, especially the guide sling, that you could easily put a hydration bag and just, you know, loop it right over um, your shoulder, even using that little elastic spot for the nippers as a place to kind of seat um, the nozzle. So we wanted to make sure it was applicable, but it, it's not specifically orientated for a sling. We do make a little feature on the bug out um, bag, which is our backpack. Um, to be able to to have a have a um, a water water bladder on it, or they do have they or do have water area, bottle. as I was criticized for saying one time. They do have a water bottle holder too. So yeah. um, you know, if you if you don't if you can get rid of your or you can live without your hydration bladder, um, just take a reusable water bottle and put that in the water bottle holder. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's the, it, and it, again, it, we, you know, we we're talking about the flexibility of vests versus packs and which packs, you know, it, 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 are you going to be gone long enough that you want to take water? Maybe you don't, you know, like the chip pack or, uh, you know, the chest pack may be a better fit for what your needs are. Uh, the, the chest packs actually a really kind of great combination of the vest and the, um, and the uh, the uh, the sling or the pack to me because I still get that kind of front loading feature. Not to mention you get that open sort of workbench to work over. In addition, you know, supporting that. And then Tom uh, Tom has pulled out another um, you know favorite uh, piece right there, which we'll get to here in a moment. But 
in general, you know, with the, I, I love having everything here in front of me that I want to readily access, but things like the, um, like the chip and the chest are great options for that. Not to mention they both are compatible with the bug out backpack. So you can choose whether you want a three liter single storage or a four liter multi-pocket solution for your bug out backpack for those backcountry adventures or those far hiking adventures. Um, as you know, you're, you're going out and, uh, visiting all the the haunts that you've been dreaming about all winter because I know that's that's what's going on in my mind. We are uh, eight days, seven days and counting from uh, opening day in Vermont, where about the other fifty percent of our rivers open up. So uh, yeah, there's got to have make sure you have all the right stuff, especially if you got to hike for those uh, first couple shots at fish. Why sling over there. vest? Why sling over vest? Crank, it's just a it depends on how you want to organize your gear. It really is. It just comes down to that. Yeah, absolutely. And what and what you feel more comfortable in. You know, um, if if you're still unsure, um, I would urge um, any of you to go to uh, go to a go to a fly shop or an Orvis store and try a vest on. Put some stuff in the pockets um, and try a vest on. Walk around with it. Try a sling bag walk around with it, bend over, uh, move it around and see what's more comfortable for you. They all take a bit of getting used to. I mean, the first time you wear a fishing vest, that's probably kind of weird. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember the first time I wore a fishing vest because I was not very old, but. Um, so, uh, and, and uh, Frank, I, I think, you know, one of the things when I, um, I started as most people did, you know, too many years ago than I'd care to, to say as younger wearing a vest as we all most likely did, you know, uh, 30 years ago. Right. Um, there weren't a lot of other options except uh, for me. It was like I could throw it in my creel. And yes, there was <laughs> there was a time when I carried a creel and that's where most of my stuff. And it was an old pair of Velcro New Balances that were my wading boots when I was, you know, nine and 10 years old uh, growing up in southwestern Wisconsin. But um uh, but, I'll, you know, when I uh, moved um, west and started guiding um, on some some of the water out in Colorado, especially the Colorado River, which is really high alpine desert. I mean, it is the desert out there. And a vest was very hot. Um, and even though that dry air, 85 degrees and in the sun, the vest was very warm for me. So I actually switched to a hip pack for a fair amount of time as a guide. And it didn't always carry everything that I needed, at least the size that I had at the time. But it did take a lot of um, one, it took a lot of that sort of extra wrapping around me and allowed me to stay a little bit cooler. Um, and uh, uh, at the time, hip packs pretty darn cool. So I not only was cooler, but I looked cooler, which is, is half the battle. <laughs> but uh, I mean, as a matter of fact, um, the, Tom did just grab the, the guide hip pack, which is another really exciting piece that we added to the line where we actually took some of the elements of the guide sling and that neat strap that Tom's wearing over his shoulder and implemented that oh, yeah. sort of water that suspension to, to, you know, kind of spread the load out, not only over the lumbar, but over the shoulder as well, um, and still get a very large capacity um, uh, storage unit at, I, I believe, another 11 or so um, liters uh, with a ton of different internalized storage. And both of the padded wings have net pass-throughs. So should you decide which side um, if you wear a canted or directly on your back, you can actually select one of those oh, two I spots to on the wrong side. Um, place the net as well. Here we go. Help Tom's having this. trouble. Help me with this. Help me. Help I me. think if you. There, there, there. I got it. I think you, you got, got it. it. Right? You can't do it. Oh, my goodness. He's got it. I got it. Okay. So, yeah. So, this is what, this is actually what uh, I wear. I, I use early in the season when I know, um, when I know I'm going to be swinging, I'm going to be doing either trout spay or nymphing. I don't need any dry flies or winter fishing. I don't need any dry flies. Um, I, I don't need that many nymphs. I just need a few, a few nymphs and uh, mostly streamers. So this is what I use, and it's and it's similar to the the sling bag in that again, you can slide that around. I got it inside out. Oh, Jesse, I'm so clumsy. And you're just, you, they're attached to the wrong sides of the bag. They are. 
Yeah, like you're just you're on your right shoulder should be on your left. Uh, oh, this one goes on. It's, the a, left it's a puzzle again. You know, it's uh, I, I honestly I've I sewed a bunch of wrong ones and sent them to Tom ex specifically, so he would have to do this uh, for everybody here's entertainment. <laughs> Why don't these? What do you mean? I that's not true. So I just put it. I just put it on the wrong. Side. I just think your uh, your your buckles are backwards because you want the um the oh. bag over your left shoulder with the forcep uh, pocket going up underneath. Uh, it is. It, it it you know. Combs probably did it to me when he I did. Wasn't I we talked about it. We talked about it. Um. <laughs> I'm lucky I can tie my shoes in the morning, Jesse. Well, Tim, uh, uh, Tom made a great point um, relatively recently, and we've we supported those with several different ways. But there's a there's a lot going on with uh, especially our new pack line. There's a lot of little hidden uh, left shoulder. You got it. I keep pulling my earbuds off. No, now you're backwards. I can't hear what you're saying. So go ahead and say something nasty about me. Uh, but a, a lot of people, um, <laughs> there's there. a lot going on with the bag. Is it, is it, is it right? Upside down. But we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna, uh, we're gonna enjoy the next moment or two. How, how to put this? But I just, bag switched, on, uh, I just switched them. I just switched them. But the um, but the, the real point is there's a lot going on with all these bags, the little pockets, little hidden features, you know, the nipper pass throughs, the other little elements. Um, and so we're going to continue to support those with fun videos for you to be able to see. There's some really cool stop motion videos that sort of shows you how some of the features work on most of the bags. Uh, and those will continue to roll out, not to mention that we'll have specific people rolling, uh, you know, showing up how they're customizing their sling bag or their hip bag. Cause that's one of the funnest things about these new bags they are very customizable to whatever your fishing situation. You know, we intrinsically think trout when we talk about these bags, but in a lot of, you know, a lot of a Southern, um, you know, tier anglers fish bass, they fish salt water. Some prefer to use a waterproof bag. Some prefer to use a cut and sew style bag like we're talking about now. And there's just a huge variety and, and, um, breadth of, um, function. And you just need to fish, fin figure out which one is the best for your fishing situation. And if, if you anyone has trouble with the straps like I did, I will give you Jesse's personal cell phone number. Um, you know, call him like late at night and um, and and he'll talk you through it on, over FaceTime. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's uh, 802 555 Well, he tried, but I still have a I still have a Colorado um I still have a Colorado area code that I, I I've I've held on to for some time. Um, so yeah, I mean, is there any other questions? We we hit on nets, we hit on accessories, we hit on packs, we hit on function. Uh, we 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 tried to solve uh, you know several of the problems out there. Um, we'd love to answer any other questions, uh, you know, and see if there's anything else out there. Um, Thomas and, uh, Thomas would like to see you attach something to one of those shoulder loops. <clears throat> Do you have a pair of snips or something you can attach to those shoulders? Would, like to, would like to see someone attach items to the shoulder loops. So um, I'm assuming it's talking about this. Yeah, 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 yeah I, I believe. See. So give me a second. I just I got to go into my, um, you know, I sort of put these bags away as I was starting to, to work on a few new projects. And so I got to find my little accessory. Um, and while Jesse's looking with all my well, little doodads to stick on, because as you know, we've been running through the meet with the media and several people about uh, how these maybe. bags work and all their neat function. Maybe if and we, uh, we build them out to have all those cool features. Uh, full disclosure. And this brings up a good point about these things. I never use the these uh, those little slots. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't like them because stuff sticks out from them a little bit. And you know, it brings up a good point. You don't need to use every single feature on these. They're there in case you want to use them, and you may eventually find a need for them. But don't feel like you have to fill up every pocket and that you have to use every little doodad. 
um, on these on these either of either a vest or a sling bag. You know, um, don't fill it up if you don't have to, because it's just it's just extra weight you're going to carry. So, um, Jesse, I am looking any... for a zinger. I've got a pair of nippers now. Now I need to find a zinger. Are there drainage holes in them? Um, Eric, there are no drainage holes, but they're not waterproof, so um, they will drain out fairly quickly. Yeah, so uh, just to address that really quick, the bag is, um, it's made out of, uh, especially the new packs are made out of a, a 600 denier, 100% um, recycled eco cordura polyester. Um, they're kiss coated as like, a, like what is considered to be a, a, a durable water repellency. Um, this is a C zero, so low low environmental impact. But um, uh, the seams are not taped specifically, um, although it'll have some water resistance, or we like to refer to it as like splash proof, not downpour proof. Um, uh, it can do, it can absolutely deal with a little bit of water uh, submersion, not so much, and uh, you know a heavy rainfall or sustained rainfall. You're going your stuff's gonna get a little bit wet. If that's something you're concerned about then a waterproof solution is definitely the better way to go, which some people really like. Other people, um, you know, not so much. Um, and, and also, you know, drain in, drain out is always kind of thing. It's always tough when you take a swim and you open up your bag and there's a little bit of water. It requires you to dump out or in Tom's case, dump out your waders too. But um, uh, uh, never mind about that. Okay. So Yusuf is back and wants to know about youth vests and tech. So Yusuf, first of all, um, I think, um, even a even a youth, even a, a child could wear uh, the mini sling or the smaller uh, Chester hip pack. There's no, you know, they're fully adjustable, and uh, there's no reason that you would need. Uh, I don't think there is any reason you would need a smaller size. That mini sling is pretty small. So uh, Jesse, why don't you grab one of your kids and put a sling on them? Um, and then uh, youth vests. What's the smallest size that the vest comes in, Jesse? Jesse's gone. What was the question, what, Tom? What, what's the smallest size the vest comes in? Uh, I the new Clearwater vest. You'll have to check. It's definitely small, if not extra small. I, I want to believe the new Clearwater vest has extra small. And we haven't talked about that one. That's a new product. Um, designed um, by Natalie Column, and it is awesome. She did a really cool job. There's some recycled fabric story stuff in that one as well. Um, so definitely check out the Clearwater vest. And I, that range is meant to be very expansive to fit, um, you know, smaller body frames all the way up to, to larger body, body frame for sure. Um, so yeah, so the, 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 the answer is that you, you should be able to find packs um, without any problem. You know, you mean not for a six month old, but you know, for a for an eight year old, you shouldn't have any trouble. And um, the, the vests should also uh, fit. I mean, it, it might be a little big on a kid, but um, you, you know, you see kids with bigger vests a lot of times, and it, it's kind of cute. Well, and I definitely wore a very large vest <laughs> for a long time, but I, I do. I intentionally we made them some smaller sizes, without a doubt, to be able to kind of straddle them there. So there's a there's here's a, a good, here's of, a good uh, comment. A zinger, Jesse. Here's a on to the hypoon right there, and it'll just allows you to be able to have that, but have a spot for your, uh, you know, for your nipper to kind of go back in there. So when you're hiking, it's not flopping all around right there. I have also seen. See how quickly I can make the switch. Um, people utilize it um, for forceps which there is a forcep solution underneath uh, the pocket, but I have seen people come right up through there and just do something like that as well. I mean, it's, again, there's one already underneath here for you to be able to clip onto that's a little bit more lower profile and your fly line can have a tendency and certainly small twigs and bramble if you're busting through can get caught on top of those forceps, but it's, it's really a daisy chain in a lot of different ways. So there's so many different things you could really clip on um, for, for your need. Maybe you have a little, uh, like a little cell phone pouch or something like that. You can usually find a way to clip those things on there should you want to have that. But I mean, most people, unless unless you uh, need to be readily available, um, you know, don't, don't fish your cell phone. It was one of the smartest things I ever started doing. Uh, Nathan, Nathan wants to know, when I'm going to replace my old sling bag, I already did. 
um, the one I had on is going to be my sling bag this year. And the, my old one went on the uh, table at Orvis with a big free sign on it. So, so And it's gone now. So somebody in the office scarfed it and are going to use it. Um, here's a good comment from Faceless. As someone who's used all the Orvis packs, I break it down like this. It's based on how long you typically fish. Backpack days longer than six hours. Large sling bag, three to six hours. Small sling, shorter days, or evenings on the water. Hip pack, same as large sling. Thank oh. you, Darcy or Timber, whoever, whoever, just, which one, whichever one of you answers. Just that, full that's, professional that's right there. Yeah, that's terrific. Yeah. <clears throat> and we know how, how much uh, uh, all you... Calgary. How would you say Calgarians? Cal 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 Calgarians? You love your backpacks. Um, and that's awesome because I love building backpacks to meet your solutions as well, or your issues uh, and hope. And uh, you, you, you continue to give me great problems to solve as well. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, yeah, um, we're working on that. Uh, we're working on that dog sling pack. Um, it'll be, it'll be at the, the pro dog sling. It's a waterproof um pack to go with the waders as well and we're hoping to launch the the boot foot um the the boot foot zippered um dog waders uh soon as well what kind of capacity does that clear water vest have do you happen to have one there with you do you, you know what i don't vest? unfortunately um i i was privy to the um samples in which uh i'm sure that phil or or somebody will We'll dump uh, the information in um, below here in a little bit. But if you just go to the website and search Clearwater Vest, uh, it should be right there. I believe it nestles very nicely near above the ultralight in over in total capacity. Uh, like that, that's 11, um, and the Pro Vest is 18 pockets. The overall capacity on Clearwater is a little greater than the ultralight, um, but uh, less than the Pro. It, it's almost like if they did a great job, sort of like the Clearwater is sort of a baby Pro where the ultralight really – focuses on slender and, and uh, lightweight and uh, breathability, um, where the clear water, it feels like as a, a more direct line to the pro design rather than, you know, kind of veering off. There's there's DNA in all of it, but now they did just an excellent job on that, um, uh, on that vest for sure. And Faceless says it's Calgarians. Calgarian, okay. Calgarians. Cal it sounds Calgarians. like something from Game of Thrones, you know, like that might have been- does. Like Star off, Wars. somewhere a little island off Westeros or something like that. How's that for your your GOT reference? You know what? Eighteen months after the end of the uh, the series. <laughs> All right, Do Darcy have, the Calgarian. Do we have any other questions that we didn't answer? And again, we you know we can't we can't tell you what's right for you. We can't give you a can't give you a standard answer or a foolproof answer so you know what we didn't talk about is really quick here and super important is you can always keep it really simple and uh there's something to be said about a lanyard certainly as a you know spent a lot of time rowing a boat for people and uh it's not love having the boat bag love having the you know, the access on the boat in wherever spots, but uh, it's sometimes it's really nice to do this, especially if you have to jump out with somebody for a little bit or you're just like, I, you know, I have these dreams this time of the year of, you know, rock hopping along a small Creek catching, you know, brook trout, you know, on a warm summer evening. Mosquitoes are never part of that, but there usually are a bunch of mosquitoes at the time of the year, but having something like this is just awesome. Um, and, uh, and, and being able to kind of quickly access, uh, you know, some quick gear, don't need to carry a lot, just, you know, small fly box, a couple flies in the pocket, and away you go. Here's a good point from Joe. One reason I prefer a waist pack to a vest or sling is because it can be easily moved up the body for deeper weighting or removed easily and set on the bank if needed. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. That's a good point. And Greg Bergstead says, have you touched on sling packs for small stream fishing? Actually, Greg, uh, I do a lot of small stream fishing, and I, I use a I use a, a hip pack uh, because I'm not wading deep, and um, you know it's it's I, I only need one fly box and a couple spools of tippet, so I don't even I don't even use I don't even take my sling pack on small streams unless um, I'm out with somebody else photographing, and then I'm carrying a, a camera and 
maybe a small drone. Um, and and whatever that. whatever you want to carry again, it does go about like how much do you need. But the the new chest hip pack at three liters, single single capacity, some internal organization. You can wear it over your shoulder and go satchel Indiana Jones style. It actually has a tuck tuckable in um, waist belt that's like a inch and a half waist belt that allows you to wear it as a hip pack. You can wear it kind of over the front like a chest pack, but it's it's a much smaller platform. And rather than being like the old vertical style chip pack, it's more horizontal. Um, and it's it's the perfect size. Like when you don't have a you need a little bit more uh than the lanyard um it's a great solution for that and it's a super versatile path to like how do you want to use it um which is just a really cool element of that yeah exactly and you get the little the tippet docking station on it and some internal support oh, that back panel for a second there too tom we need to rotate it around you can see on the sides there's little tuck-in panels um where both the uh, side release clips come out the top to where to put the shoulder strap on and along the back panel on the sides where you tuck in the uh, waist strap if you don't want to use it. Some people might just use the waist strap. So that pack was specifically meant to be just ultraversal, not to mention that it does clip onto the front of the um, bug out backpack if you want to do the the uh, full on, um, you know, C-3PO chests like uh, Uber, Uber Angler. Yeah, this is going to be my small stream pack this year. I'm switching, switching all over to the new stuff. See, it's still got the label, it's still got the tag on it. <laughs> but I'm in the process of reorganizing. Just knowing that we're even making Tom think about switching from tried and true and decades of experience equipment for him, you know, uh, makes me feel warm inside. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of great features on the new stuff. I'm ready to switch. Well, it's great. Um, I can confirm you, uh, Nathan says, I can confirm you can carry two reels and four IPAS. I don't know what IPAS is in the new Orvis guide sling. Maybe a typo or maybe it's a fishing device that I don't know about. IPAS. Uh, iPads? <laughs> two reels and four iPads. There's a lot of iPads. Yeah, it's a lot of iPads. I mean, oh, I, IPA, know. IPAs. <laughs> I, I'm not a beer drinker. <laughs> what can I say? I, I didn't see the comment. I feel like I would have probably picked up on that, but uh, yeah, you probably would have. <laughs> um, that's well, you know what? And uh, I was having a conversation uh, with somebody <laughs> yesterday about uh, on the bug out backpack. There's the uh, kind of rod tube extender piece, and it's uh, a little bit of it's just like sort of a a piece that you can release from the water bottle pocket that allows you to engage a rod tube in there. And it makes the rod tube sit lower so it doesn't hit branches as you're taking the backpack through stuff. And uh, they were like, well, you know, you could do this or that. And I'm like, and just so you know, you can easily fit two additional 16 ounce cans down in there if you need to, you know, uh, you know, extend the amount of Gatorade you need to carry uh, during Gatorade, the day. Gatorade, yeah. Uh, yeah you know, sure, Gatorade. You're rather than a rod tube. Absolutely. Which is exciting. Are you, uh, Tom, are you excited Excited for season to kick off here in Vermont? Well, I, you know, I don't care if the season kicks off. I'm, I'm excited for the water to warm up a little bit so I can catch a couple of fish. Yeah. The valley snow, though, it's, it's going away fast. And yeah, there's still a lot up on the mountains. Here, it's, it's moving still quick. A lot, still a lot up on the mountains. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm, I'm definitely I'm more ready. Than ready. And I bet most of you are as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Luke uh, asked for recommend recommendations on waterproof fly box for the flats. Luke, I don't know of any good ones. I, I honestly don't know of any good waterproof fly boxes, um, other than to to put your fly box in a Ziploc bag or a you know a, a inexpensive lightweight dry bag. That's what I use for my camera. Um, you know, if I'm if it's going to rain, or actually, I always put my camera, my DSLR, in a in a lightweight uh, waterproof stuff sack because uh, I've been known to fall in here and there. I'll have you know, this winter is the first time I've fallen in in years, Jesse. So stop teasing me about it. Figures I fall I in every up. time I fish. It's just <sighs> a given. For me. <laughs> That's the first time I have in a long time, but. Um, it's nice when we get to the time of the year where 
uh, it doesn't matter as much. You don't care. It, yeah. It, it's when you're it's still and you know, even the half like slip and put your hand in, you're like, oh, great. I got that going on for the rest of the day. But, you know, it's it's just part of it. And I guess I would say I'm an aggressive waiter um, and uh, probably put myself in positions uh, I shouldn't because, you know, I want to I want to fish that spot. Uh, but then I often pay for it too. And I haven't had any, you know, Brad Pitt swimming down the river things in a few years, but, uh, that does happen occasionally. Yeah. Okay. Eric, I just want to celebrate that with you, uh, as well. Um, with the new extended season in New York, that's a very, very exciting regulation change. Uh, New York opened yesterday and it does not close ever. So that's pretty exciting. It is pretty exciting. It is pretty exciting. Um, Eric is saying that the clear plastic Orvis boxes are pretty waterproof. Yeah, those new boxes, those new compartment boxes look like they'll be pretty waterproof. I haven't tested it yet, but the, um, those, where are they? Those are you talking about the newer version of these guys? I think he might be talking about this one. Yeah, I, I don't think that one has a has a specific. Um, I don't think so, that has a is a rim on it specifically, but they have a really nice tight closure. Yeah, it's a it, it is a tight closure. It'd probably be pretty pretty waterproof. I think if you fell in and you got out quickly, you wouldn't get any water in this fly box. So. Yeah, and it's not a it's not a uh, it's not a flat. <clears throat> well, you could make it a flats um, box, but um, Dylan over at Plan D uh, made a really nice waterproof case. These are, you know, more specifically for strung out flies, um, but a really nice engaging rim there and uh, a locking mechanism that, sorry, it's opposite for me. Um, really nice box there, but they're not, uh, it's not so much designed for flats um, as it is for more steelhead swing flies, articulated flies, um, but very nice to come in a couple different sizes as well. Let's see. Any other questions? I guess not. People drop seem to drop off pretty quickly after an hour. So well, I you know I'd get bored of me too. Yeah, I, my kids don't make it this long. Are you kidding me? They... <laughs> I I made it this long. I didn't drop out. Well, that's that's because you're you're a special person, Tom. You think so? Oh, I do. I don't know. Well, anyway, thank you. Oh, what? Packer Vesa be well suited to Tankara, the smallest one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the mini sling or that or that. What did you call that? That that little the that chip last little one chest hip. Yeah, chest hip pack. Yep. Um, yeah. That you don't one need is, much for Tankara. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the beauty of Tankara is uh, very very limited needs, right? Um, it, you yeah. know, it just depends on what else you want to to carry, um, but. Uh, a few flies, and uh, I would assume maybe some replacement leader material and line, and that's about it. So sounds yeah, like a you, sounds like a good Jerry, shirt to to carry what you need. Yeah, J yeah, Jerry, you could put all that stuff in your pocket for ten car. Not that we don't want to sell you a, a new pack or bag, but I, I don't think you really need one. That's where you need the bug out backpack and the chest hip pack combined, right? So you got everything you need for your big adventures, but just the chip pack for your little ones. I'll remember that. I'm going to try that concept this year. It's pretty awesome. I think that'll be good. Yeah, when like, I, yeah. When I'm, long when hikes I'm, up to remote high alpine lakes. That's what I always yeah. envision. Um, but it also could me be me um, over over gearing up for yeah. uh, you know a half a mile that walk down the Batten Kill. <laughs> I think it's that combo is going to be great for when I'm photographing somebody small stream fishing, but then I want to fish as well. I can just put my small stream stuff in the chip pack, put it and put all my camera gear in the bug out backpack. And that'll, that'll yeah. work out really well. Well, the nice divider in there, you can separate it. The chip pack is designed to fit inside the bug out backpack side access or top access. So it, it really yeah. does kind of modularly create these different, um, you know, ways to carry stuff in. So it can just be mm -hmm. a backpack. When you get there, you can, you know, customize as needed. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, everyone. 
Well, um, Jesse and I want to want to really thank you for spending an hour with us today, and, and you had some great questions. I hope we hope we answered your questions about the nets because um, there were a lot of net questions, and I think that I think Jesse, you covered that really well. Um, you can carry a net easily on all of these devices, and um, uh, let's see what's coming up next week. Uh, next week on Monday, we have a Flagler and Rosenbauer tie off. We're going to tie a big dry fly, a Bugmeister, Bugmeister, and which reminds me, I got to start practicing so I can, can whip. I just want to know how Tim Johnson carries both a milkshake and a root beer float at the same time with the gear in his pocket. It just, I'm confused. Oh, that no. guy's an ice cream expert. Make no doubt. Sounds like sounds like my kind of day, though. Yeah, mine too. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, thanks again, and um, have a great weekend. I hope you get outside and uh, do a little fishing or otherwise enjoy the outdoors. And, Jesse, thank you for taking the time away from work and your family. And uh, It's my pleasure, Tom. Uh, go Vest. Go Packers. Go Brewers. I'm not saying anything. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.